prison. That's what I'm saying. I can't. I don't regret going to prison at all. What was it like? What was it like the day they told you? How much time did you get? Twelve years. Yeah. And you did every. You did all twelve. So my no, no, I didn't. So okay, I, okay. Did, I did. I uh, did just just shy of. I did around six years. Six. Okay. So now, so three, four months after sentencing, I'm in prison. Um, my lawyer calls me, sets up a call, and he says, "Hey, listen. So the DEA toxicology report came back." Your the substance that the, how they sentenced you and how it's a, and how it really measures up is they're saying it's fifty percent. They just again, I th- how did they come up with these numbers, man? So like, do they have some guinea pig that they're te- that they're testing the drugs with? I, I don't understand how they come up with it, but they said fifty percent is potent as the as they initially thought. So that justified a three level departure, which took almost three years off the sentence. So almost four. It's like three and a half years. So. That's big, a big reduction. And then when I was incarcerated, they have what's called the RDAP program. And that stands for the Residential Drug and Alcohol Abuse Treatment Program. Mm-hmm. That's a nine-month program. If you complete it in nine months, it's residential, so you move to a drug dorm. You're with other uh, people who have recognized that they have a substance abuse problem. Um, I was diagnosed with uh, chronic marijuana abuse disorder. <laughs> So at the advice of my lawyer, I made sure that they knew that I had a marijuana abuse problem before I went to prison. Um, wow. <laughs> and it works. Mm. It, it does work. And you know, it's funny. People pay these prison, these white collar guys that are like terrified to death of going to prison. They got caught stealing a couple million dollars. They go to prison. They're like, well, no, I'm going to do 10 years. This is not good. And their lawyer's like, don't worry, man. You're going to get a year off for this. You're going to get a year off for that. Don't worry, man. You're only going to do five. And they're not wrong. I mean, if, if you stay on good behavior. Uh, which is not hard to do in federal prison. It's not hard to not get in trouble in federal prison. I mean, it's it's really not. So, I mean, you might get caught taking a banana out of the chow hall. They're going to make you push a pink lawnmower for an hour. You know, it's they're not going to throw you in the hole for that. Um, you know, the, it, you, you, you mind your own business, stay in your own lane, work out, read, do things that are productive. Um, a lot of great people in there. There's a lot of scumbags too, but... A lot of great people. It's not hard to mind your own business, man. Be respectful. Be polite. Don't put your feet in other people's chairs. I, I saw a guy almost get killed for using someone's chair as a footstool. That's not smart. Think about it. You wear those shoes in the bathroom everywhere yeah. you go. But people that are coming, these white collar guys coming straight off the street, they're not thinking like that. You were in this low security though, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And FCI, FCI Coleman. And then I went to Pensacola camp. So when I got to Pensacola, that's on a Navy base. That, I think, what's her name? Bar, uh, I'm trying to think of her name. She wrote an article about Pensacola, like, in the late 90s, how it was, like, club fed. Mm. Um, you, you have to Google it, Pensacola club fed. Pensacola so, club fed. That's your cue, Aiden. So, uh, you know, she wrote this article, blew it up, said these are the conditions. We had a movie theater, like a real movie theater, mm. um, gourmet food. Back then, prison was not a bad experience. They even had co-ed federal prisons where men and women were together. You didn't really? wear jumpsuits or greens or khakis. You wore street clothes. Hmm. You know, it's uh, and even at Pensacola, they didn't have they, the movie theater was no longer active due to asbestos or whatever. But excuse me, we did have movie night, and pretty much every night after four p.m., they play movies in the visiting room on a big screen. Hmm. And, you know, you can pop popcorn, bring food, do whatever. Really, man, it, and I hate saying this, like I'm not trying to, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing that without it, you know, there's no conjugal visits. So you take the conjugals, you got to give these guys something. Yeah. So, but, you know, the camaraderie, and I made more friends at Pensacola than I probably made in my entire life. Really? And, oh, man, my buddy Mark <laughs> Frazier um, he's over in Indian Harbor beach. He owned, uh, like pill mills. He, now he refuses to call it that, but he owned multiple locations. There were pain clinics. People, they were bringing people in by the bus load. They were prescribing them, you know, to, to, they were selling Oxycontin and the DEA came in and said, you can't do that no more. You're going to prison. And, you know, I met multiple people that were in that line of work. I think he got five years. Um, Jesus. I worked out with him every day. He was my workout partner. I'm hoping to see him while I'm here in Florida. Great dude. I mean, one one of the one of the best dudes I've ever met. 
And so, like, I really what can't... What made him a great dude if he was selling Oxycontins to loads of people? Well, I, I know, right? So, but but look at what I was doing. Yeah. And, and we... I I'm, think, I'm, I'm curious. Right, yeah, so, what, what makes him so great? I mean, he has integrity. If he tells you he's going to do something for you, he does it. He'll give you the shirt off of his back. Um, he's not going to steal from you. He's not going to lie to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, what really constitutes, what really makes someone a good person? You know what I mean? Is it... A, a mistake that they made or the wrong path that they took in life, the wrong turn, you know, we we're all capable of making mistakes. And I think most people have probably done something in their life that they could have went to jail for. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's a book called like three felonies a day. It talks about it, how even a federal judge is committing three felonies a day and doesn't even know it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there's thousands, there's what, 200,000 laws in this country. Mm-hmm. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, if you distill all of those laws down, don't hurt people and don't take their shit. It's as simple as that. Right. Why do you have to pervert justice? Why do you have to confuse things? Mm-hmm. You know, why do you have to create all these thousands of laws? It's well, pointless. It's, it's, Don't it's hurt an people, industry. man. Don't hurt people. Yeah. And, you know, and, th- and, that, and that's where in, in the RDAP program, which I'm so gra- That's where I met Mark. In the RDAP program, I'm so grateful that I had an opportunity. Now, of course, I took this program to get a year off my sentence. Mm-hmm. That's why I took it. That's why everybody takes it. Right. But in the program... What the, what it really does, it, it's based on CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. Mm. And it c- helps us connect the dots between activating events, between something happening, and the way we feel. The idea is that there's something that happens in the middle of those two things. And in the middle of those two things is our, th- our cognitions. It's our thinking. And we think in patterns. So when we develop a thinking pattern, these patterns persist. That's what patterns do. So... They pull can, that thing in front of you a little bit more. You, you, my you, bad. You, you, if, you're, if you want to be over there, you can pull it. Yeah. So, so these patterns persist, and, and they wreak havoc in our lives. And the thing is, it's so easy to point a finger and be like, well, you made me feel this way, or you did this, and you did that, and, and it made me feel this way. But the thing is, is all we're doing is pushing the blame. When in reality, it's not what someone else did that made me feel the way I feel. It's what I thought about what they did mm-hmm. that made me feel the way I feel. The meaning you put to it. Right. But, but the idea is, you know, we have 70,000 cognitions a day and most of those are irrational. Like 80% of those are totally irrational. Really? Yeah. Most of our thinking is irrational. Like, right. so now we think about it, hopefully before we get down to the feelings, the actions and the outcome, yeah. before we act or respond, we think about it and we do the right thing. So by evaluating the way I'm thinking, by realizing that the way I feel, like when I real the, the number we call it a a uh, rational self analysis an RSA. So you know I write down what happened. I write down what I thought about what happened, and that might be ten different things. And then I write down how I felt. How did I feel? It all starts for me the way I do it, and I still do them today. the The way I do it is when I feel some way that I don't want to feel. When mm-hmm. I realize I'm sad, or I'm angry, or I'm disappointed, I'm frustrated, I'm stressed out something's not adding up, then I just have, I, sometimes I should do it more than I do, but, but, you know, I write down the feeling first and then I draw like a little emoji or emoticon that kind of symbolizes how I feel. And then I try to evaluate what led to me feeling that way. Because through that, it's just exercise, man. If you want your muscles to get bigger, you lift weights. If you want your brain to get sharper, if you want to think better, you evaluate your thinking, you exercise your thinking. And over time, the idea is that your thinking patterns get a little better. So Interesting. So you're kind of like back engineering the way you feel into like thoughts and, right. and, and, and things. It's that funny, the RDAP the program, if you take it seriously, it turns you into, it turns you into like a psychologist. For really? real. I, I love it. I think. Is it R-D-A-T? R-D-A-P. R-D-A-P. Residential R-D-A-P. Drug and Alcohol Abuse Treatment Program. Okay. Something like that.